I would like now to introduce to you a former uh, singing celebrity in the Philippines, turned recognized evangelist in the service of the Filipino people community, our untiring dedicated servant uh, of God, our evangelist. Ray Anthony Fuentes. Theology. Theology is the study of God. It's systematized. Okay? So it's systematic theology, and it says that it has sold over, over a quarter of a million copies, and yet not a single chapter about the kingdom. It is strange to me because that's all Jesus talked about in the Gospels. If you, if you read all four Gospels, Jesus obviously talked about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. As a matter of fact, uh, in chapter 13 of the book of Matthew, it's loaded with parables about the kingdom. He just wanted the people to understand what the kingdom is all about. Because that is what he brought when he came to earth. The first thing that came out of his mouth was about the kingdom. He says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Before he went to the cross, he says, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a testimony. That's interesting to me. Why? Because, I'm not trying to be trivial, but he doesn't say that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached through tracts. But we can still do that. But he says that the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a testimony. In other words, your life will validate that the gospel is good news indeed. It is through our life. And this is why Jesus came to establish his kingdom. He did not establish a church. We need to differentiate all of these terms in the Bible so that we can get an understanding. Because the Bible says, in all you're getting, no matter what it costs you, get understanding. Why? Because if I don't understand it, then I cannot apply it in life. And if I can't, if I can't apply it in life, then I will never be able to experience what the Word is saying to begin with. So in all you're getting, get understanding. And that's my passion. Enabling the church to be able to understand concepts, principles, some of the terms, some of the terminologies in, in Scripture. And so, uh, Jesus never established the church. He says, I will build my church. There's a difference. See, Jesus came to establish His kingdom in the lives of people. And since the church is the authorized agency of the kingdom, then He comes also to build the church. Why? Because it would be useless for the church to be the authorized agency of the kingdom and the authorized agency is powerless. St. Paul says that the kingdom is not a matter of talk. We can talk all we want. Yes. The kingdom is not a matter of talk, but of power. And this is what people see in your life. It becomes a testimony validating the good news of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And so this is why, this is my passion now. I, I, I want to understand it because I want to live it. I want to live it. This is why he taught us to pray. Thy kingdom, come. How does that happen? Thy will, no longer my will. Thy will be done, where? On earth, where we are, point of reference. As it is, in heaven. Meaning to say what Jesus is teaching us to pray is that heaven and earth should be in sync. Heaven and earth should be in alignment. Heaven and earth should be in agreement. Earth should not get messed up potentially 
But the reason why earth is so messed up, why? Is because we have the tendency to move away from God. My will be done. Or in Tagalog, ah, basta. <laughs> See, you need to understand heaven does not adjust to us. We adjust to heaven. Why? Because everything in heaven is already settled. In, albeit in a different sense, in Psalm 119, verse 89, the psalmist says, Thy word, O Lord, where we get the will of God, Thy word, O Lord, is eternal. It is forever settled in heaven. It's settled. All we need to do is adjust to it. All we need to do is live by it. Then we can experience what the kingdom is all about here on earth in our lives. And so I'd like to go to uh, the prayer Jesus taught us. Um, I think I'd like to time myself because I, I, I want to be on time. <laughs> okay. Now, um, I just want to focus on uh, this concept, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As a matter of fact, uh, they forgot to put the comma. Thy kingdom come, comma, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, the reason why I say comma, because the next part is related to the former part. Thy kingdom come. How? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, the word be in the dictionary is also defined as to remain continually. So if you want to use that in the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will remain continually done on earth. Not just during Sunday. Let thy will remain continually done on earth, point of reference as it is, where? In heaven. Okay. Now. The concept of the kingdom, first of all, it says, our Father, where? That's the place where God is. Okay. Now. It says, thy kingdom, <clears throat> that's the government of heaven. See, when you, when you talk about, uh, in the Bible, it says the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Although they are related, but they are different. When it says the kingdom of God, it talks about the person ruling God. When you talk about the kingdom of heaven, you talk about the place where God is ruling. Clear? Hello? Okay. <laughs> so the kingdom of heaven... Basically, is the comprehensive rule and agenda of God in every area of your life. You need to understand that. The kingdom is the comprehensive rule and agenda of God in every area of your life. In your love life. <laughs> this is why the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked. In your social life, in your financial life, in your family life, in our church life, every single agenda okay, pertaining to our lives, heaven has a say. Okay? So the kingdom is the comprehensive rule and agenda. Now I don't know about you, uh, uh, for us Filipinos, I don't know how long you've been here, but in the Philippines when you have a brand new car, we have it insured. What kind of policy do we get? A comprehensive policy. Why? Because if something happens to the car, who won't worry about it. The policy takes care of it. Amen. And this is why the kingdom wants to take good care of you. Okay? This is the comprehensive rule and agenda of God in every area of your life. Now notice what he says. Thy kingdom come. You're asking it to arrive. You're asking it to come into view. But the question I have in mind is, okay, you're asking it to come. My question is, before it comes, what is in existence? Why are you asking the kingdom to come? What is lacking that you need the kingdom to come? What is in existence? Look, at around, look around you in the, in the world today. There are only three things happening today. Chaos, conflict, confusion. Every problem in the world is bound in those three situations. Chaos. Conflict, confusion. So you understand that there's conflict in your life. You, you understand that there's confusion in your life. You understand that there's chaos in your family. And you pray, Lord, please let your kingdom come. Let it subdue my situation. 
Uh, you get what I'm saying? So you're asking it to come and come into view. Now, the government in Isaiah, I don't know if you've read this, maybe you have, maybe you heard this verse uh, read before, uh, especially during Christmas, where it says, For unto us a son is born, unto us a child is given. Have you heard that? Isaiah 9 6. Now, notice in that particular verse, it says, His son. And the government, that's another word for kingdom, and the government will be on his shoulders. What does it say? It's going to be his responsibility. Right? And we Filipinos, we have a, we have also the same saying. Nakasalalay sa aking mga balika. I'm going to take care of it. It's my responsibility. So the government will be on his shoulders. Now that verse, in ver uh, that particular verse also in verse 7, actually in other words, in the verse 7 it says, And of the increase of his rule and of his peace, there will be no end. 